And let me let me change the way this screen layout works. No um, um, I'm a, you know I am currently in Ohio, and, oh, cool. and I have revealed so much corruption here. It is absolutely incredible. There's more wow. corruption here than you could ever imagine. It's so mm. corrupt here. And the news media today lied about me and said I sent a video off to someone. You know, as you know, Sean, from the bullshit I've previous conversations. Yeah, that that you know, I'm a lightning rod, brother. And people, yeah. Can you turn these lights off? Yes. That Alexa, one. turn. That's actually an accurate description of you. You are a lightning rod. I love that that actual breakdown of you. <laughs> so accurate. I am a natural lightning rod. Do you need to speak to you? Turn those lights off. Okay. So so I know we don't have a lot of time. You know, I'm using my natural lightning rod ability coupled with the law to change things. And so that's okay. that's what I'm but I want to talk to you about your story because it's my it's my it's as you know, Terry versus Ohio is is the most destructive policy created by the Supreme Court in the United States of America. And you were actually, and I'm just gonna preface your story and then I want to hear it from you. Um, Sean Antonio, this that's Sean Antonio, everybody recording has started. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Hello. Um, and so Sean Antonio, when you create reasonable suspicion as being the standard for why a cop can arrest you and they're going to call it detained, Sean Antonio has a nightmare story for you that you cannot even believe. It is the most morbid, twisted, disgusting Terry versus Ohio thing you've ever heard in your life. So now typically I have my graphic behind me, but I don't have it right now. So I'm just gonna explain it. In 1968, Terry versus Ohio was passed. It was a racist decision against John Terry. And what that did is it made it so that police could lose the fourth amendment completely. And they could investigate you based on their reasonable articulable suspicion. Read RAS. Re and, and, the, and what we've seen across America is these doofus cops who are absolute morons are now the <laughs> ones deciding that they're reasonably suspicious of you. And so now that that court holding of Terry versus Ohio in 1968, that's going to then spread into dozens of cases. But the one that's going to ruin Sean's life for a decade is going to be called SITS versus Michigan State Police, S-I-T-Z. And that case creates DUI checkpoints. Now, once the, the Supreme Court unlegislated policies created by a bunch of appointed kings who we have to change that, we have to, we have to elect Supreme Court personnel, what they did when they create the policy of Terry where detainment, and now it's immediate handcuff, immediate POWS, when they create the policy of SITS versus Michigan State Police, that you have to stop for a DUI checkpoint, you have to check in, and you have to do these things. So now they're going to, the police in America are going to create policies around the DUI interaction that if you don't test or you do test, they can arrest you. And we saw that recently with Edward Bronstein. He was stopped at a DUI checkpoint and then murdered. You saw that. I'm, I'm sure you saw Edward Bronstein get murdered in California. Heard about that. Yep. So I'm not going to say anything else that it's, this is a Terry versus Ohio case that we're dealing with, even though the things you're going to hear, you're not going to be able to apply them, but it is Terry versus Ohio. So Sean Antonio, without further ado, let's start from the beginning. Tell me your yeah. story. So yeah. Hi, everybody. First of all, thanks for checking in. Uh, it's fucking amazing to see you, my friend. Great to connect with you after all this time. It's awesome to be with you. Thank you for bringing me aboard. And hi, everybody. I'm Sean Antonio. I am actually by trade and what I do in my purpose. I'm a life coach, motivational speaker, and author. I've been doing that for a very long time, uh, specifically the past 10 years. I've been training for about 18 Coach thousands of people all over the world. Uh, I speak four languages. I'm part Panamanian and Dutch. I've had many careers. Chile knows me from my previous career. Beautiful. Yay. My previous career was uh, I was a huge event coordinator in America and Australia for 17 years. I did over 3,865 events. I'm a beast in that world. And then I retired. I got, uh, got to the pinnacle of where I was done. I retired from that world. This story actually applies to that moment. Before that, I was a professional dancer for 12 years too. So I've had some crazy, awesome success in my life. So in my story and where it starts is it starts in my nightlife career. So as Chili knows me from back in those days, uh, I actually ended up being, you know, uh, in this position where I, I went up opening up a couple of restaurants and I opened up this restaurant here in Hollywood. Uh, I won't say the name, doesn't matter. Let me, let me jump in real quick. Let me, let me jump in real quick. I've known Sean since 1999 when I yeah, first yeah. left Los Angeles. And yeah. then in 2000, 2001, Sean held events and these are going to be nightclubs and and mm -hmm. uh, uh, day events, night events, and he's going to throw yep. thousands, three thousand over. He said the number. Yeah, almost so yeah. When he says he throws an event, he's throwing at you know, at uh, what was the movie name of the studios, club? rooftops, uh, what was the hotels, club on La Brea and Sunset though. That club on La Brea. Ah, Sunset La Brea. Uh, which one? Uh, Garden of Eden. Ha! Garden of Eden. He Hollywood. Threw, 
And I went to dozens of those and he was an yeah, amazing yeah, yeah. promoter. So he's a promoter. And then after he's going to, he's going to kind of segue away from promoting segue. and he's going to open yeah. a couple of restaurants. So I just yeah. want to make it clear for the people who are listening. Oh, thank you for that. Yeah. It's always kind of weird for me when I do interviews to hear my story back said back to me. So thank you for that. And it was Hollywood La Brea Garden of Eden. That place right. was Garden of Eden. Garden of Shout Eden. out to David Judenka, the owner of that place. Good friend thank of mine. Love David. That. Yeah, he was awesome. So point being is I was a nightlife. So I shifted because I wanted to actually go into opening up my own restaurants, nightclubs, bars in my own capacity. So I decided to jump into the world of general managing and learning what that looked like and learning that skill set. So I opened a place in Hollywood and on my way out, I had I'd been there for about seven months. I started in May of 2016. And my job was to run the entire place, book all the events, you know, train the staff, run the place on a daily basis. I was pretty much there anywhere between 60 to 90 hours a week. I was the main face of that place. And it was awesome. Now, my history of throwing events had me have a great following of people. So people would come to my restaurant because I was that guy. Yep. So fast forward to the story. The story, it's New Year's Eve night and um, I'm hosting the event. I'm general managing, running the place. We had events, blah, blah, blah. New Year's Eve hits. I do a, a little champagne toast with friends. Everybody's there. By the way, I have like a one ounce sip of the champagne just for the story to kind of include why. So uh, I go and I wrap up the night. It's New Year's, it's over, it's two in the morning. I'm saying goodnight to my staff, thanking them for their hard work. Uh, at three, specifically 3.54 in the morning, I leave the venue and about to get in my car. And I called the wife, or we're texting. And I'm like, hey, it's kind of a weird energy. Happy New Year, see you soon on my way home. Be home in about 45 minutes at that point what in time. Is it again? What year is it again? Uh, it's 2016 going 17. So it's New Year's Day morning, January 1st, 2017 at 3.54 a.m. to be specific. Okay. okay, okay, So I'm in my car, in my SUV, my BMW X3 at that point in time, texting the wife, hey, babe, look forward to seeing you. Great event tonight. We killed it. See you in a bit. It's about a 45-minute drive home from Hollywood to Pasadena, where I lived at that point in time. And I didn't know this, which just plays into the uh, the story. My area had just moved into it. I'd been there for about five weeks. I had just left Eagle Rock before that. And... um. Yeah, it was a gang territory between the black gangs and the Hispanic gangs. So uh, me being a black Hispanic, I, I am of both those worlds and not a gang member. <laughs> so I'm driving home and I had this experience of like, wow, it's like this eerie, weird feeling. I saw a couple of drunk drivers and I'm just like watching people and I'm dead sober. By the way, the, the whole point of this thing too is that I'm dead sober, right? <laughs> so I'm driving home, I'm watching people serving the highway, but I'm just singing and I'm happy to go home to my wife and daughter. Our daughter at that point in time, yeah, she was a year and four months old. She was, you know, a baby. And, and I was not seen my wife all week because I've been working so much. So I'm excited to go home, get off the freeway. I pull aside. At this moment, I pulled aside and I looked around and I was like, wow, there's no one in the road. It's, you know, four in the morning, specifically like 4.30 in the morning. And I'm going, driving about 32 miles an hour. I'll never forget that speed because I just remember driving slow because it was really dingy and like um, foggy and the floors were, no, the streets were wet because it had rained earlier. So I go to make my left to my new uh, area in Pasadena off of Washington and Fair Oaks in Pasadena. And as I make my left, I hear in my words, I've said over and over again, it is the loudest bang I've ever heard in my life. I got hit from the right-hand side, passenger side of my SUV, uh, out of nowhere, didn't see anybody, anything, right? Um, and I made my turn, I was legally made my turn, ready to go. And I got hit so loud, my car got pushed, I didn't know this at the time, so I was in it. Right. SUV got pushed two lanes over. Uh, okay. into wow. a turning lane so all of my airbags went off glass shattered craziness i was like what hit me because there's no one around so i hop out of the car i'm of course adrenaline up and like what's going on i look over and there's a gentleman on the floor breathing heavily one of his legs is twisted i see a motorcycle in two pieces and i'm like what the fuck so i run over to two uh people and say hey guys uh can you do me a favor? Uh, you saw this call ambulance, you know, fire department, the whole night. These people were awesome and gracious enough to call all those people. Uh, I go over to John and I'm like, hey, he's breathing. He's alive. I'm talking I'm like, hey, you okay, okay. Take out my jacket, put my jacket on him. I'm like, oh, call my wife. I'm freaking out. I'm like, oh, all right. So cops roll in. About six minutes later, my wife gets to the scene. And cops, everybody, family. I'm like, hey, guys, I'm Sean, I'm here. But I'm hopped up. I'm drumming. I'm drumming. You know, sure. it's like four, Someone three, just three, slammed into your car. And yeah, 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 yeah. Ground. So I Most see our truck. I'm now SUV. And I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm just like, so as soon as everybody rolls up, I'm like, hey, guys, here, Sean. Uh, you know, I introduce myself. And fast forward. I go through all the, the loopholes. The, did you drink? Blah, blah, blah. I said, sir, this is who I am. To two officers that were talking to me at the point in time. I said, I, I'm a general manager. I run venues, blah, blah, blah. I had a one ounce little sip of something for New Year's. That was it. That was so long ago. It's not in my system. So, so let me clarify that. So he's sober the entire night. 
at Joe New Year's, Year's mm-hmm. at New Year's, yeah. it's his yeah. bar, it's his, yeah. it's his staff. At yeah. New Year's, when yeah. everybody has a toast, he has a tiny little sip yeah. of, yeah. What else? Of, 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 a, of, a, of a toast and the champagne. Yeah. Okay, and so that that's the entire amount of alcohol Sean has. Which, by the way, everybody who knows anything about me, they know I don't drink. It's just not what I do. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, I've always, it's always been knows, awesome to me. You don't drink. Sean, yeah, Sean knows that about me. I've never been a drinker. I've had drunk nights before. I yeah. overdosed on alcohol on my 25th birthday, but I don't yeah. drink alcohol. That's why I overdosed on alcohol. And so Sean mm-hmm. has one little sip with his yeah. staff. That's in yeah. total for the whole yeah. night. Then he's and I'm also I'm also a six foot dude, 190 pounds, like one I'm sitting and, black, black. Like, and a black you know, man. And a black man. This is where the black man in America comes into play. So I get out, I do all the loopholes, I do the things. I'm I'm, I'm completely telling them what happened. I'm doing the uh the, the sobriety mistake test. Number one. Mistake number yeah, one. The mistake number one. I was of the mindset that cops were there. They helped me. They could clearly see that I do got hit. That was my with them. Do not talk to cops. I didn't know that. My naivety. Do not you know, talk to them. Yeah, I did it. My, my night at that point in time, first of all, here's where I was. My vanilla naivety about cops and not really realizing that black plays a part. Because being not just raised black, Spanish scary, and it's scary. But yeah, I yeah, agree. exactly. Right. So that and then also too, you know, I you could clearly see the scene of the accident that I, I was hit. You could tell I'm here. I'm passing all the tests, doing the backwards and this so, and all so that now, stuff. No, right? no, let, let, look, I like chronological. So the guy slams you, you see him on the mm-hmm. ground, you call 911 because mm-hmm. this guy's unconscious. Uh, the him. the uh, witness is called. So they call. I call, call my wife. wife and you're like, oh my God, I'm shook up. I'm, my adrenaline's yeah, flying, yeah. right? And this she guy gets there, there like that. She's second, there, right? Yeah, and she's there. So there. then, so then now the cops come. Is the guy moving? Is the guy on the ground moving? The guy's moving. They're talking to him. The paramedics come. They're talking to him. He's he's breathing. He's breathing very heavily. He's like, <laughs> and his eyes were wide open. Uh, we later found out that he was underneath. He was under the influence of meth. Um, we didn't know that at that point in time. But he had and a meth pipe he's in his going pocket. to die. And no, no, not at all. That wasn't uh, on the. That wasn't on the docket at that point in time. Okay. We didn't. We didn't know that. He just. He was in bad, rough shape. He had a broken leg, and and that was what they had. He was breathing heavily. We didn't know why. Uh, obviously, now we found out he had meth in his system later on. That was what actually now contributed. The cops, to the cops show up, and they they. Oh, he's also him. by the way. Little side note: he's also white. So he's white. I'm black. There's that. Right. Race matters. Race matters. Today, in this in this situation today. <laughs> and so now what happens when the cops get there? They ask you to take some tests and you say that you will? Uh, yeah, well, one of the officers came over. I waved him over. I'm saying, hey, officer, I'm, I'm Sean. I had told him the whole story. This is who I am. This is where I live up the block. I just moved here. I just got hit. This is my situation. I just tell him what actually happened. He's taking okay. notes and another cop comes over and he starts drilling me. He's like, whose jacket is this? I'm like, it's my jacket, sir. I, the gentleman, I saw him. You can tell it's a jacket. First of all, I'm wearing a suit pants, a suit jacket, right? So. First of all, the guy comes up super obnoxious. And I'm like, hey, officer, I'm, I'm the guy. I'm Sean. I got hit. And I kept saying, I got hit. Here's what happened. That that my whole recording was like, I got hit. I got hit. Here's what happened. You know? So, um, yeah, I, I immediately had to go do this. Well, not immediately, but very, very short after I had to go do the sobriety test. I was like, oh, yeah, fine. So you're doing like, yeah, that, done. That, include did. Bre- that includes a breathalyzer. That- breathalyzer was later. Yeah, breathalyzer was later. So uh, uh, order of events, I do the, 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 the field sobriety test and I pass all that stuff. And one thing I didn't know, which we learned later on in life, a uh, horizontal nystigmus, you can't fake that. Your eyes, when they do the eye, eye test and you look up, you, if you're drinking, you can see alcohol, like the veins in your eyes say that you're drunk. You can't fake that. I and your eyes glitch a little bit. So I did that and I had no horizontal nystigmus. That's what they call it. I learned it on right. later after the fact. So I pass all that. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to go home. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm like, I cooperated. I told him what happened. So I'm just going to go. Eye, what he's trying to say is the eye test that they do for alcohol. It, when you move your eyes from left to right, if you're mm-hmm. impaired on alcohol, your eyes will indeed shake. Yep. And they will you, shake. You can't stop it. That's what he's saying to you right now. Yep. I want to explain it's, it's, it to the audience so they understand. Thank you. Yeah. Right. So you, if you've had more than two or three drinks and you look to the left, look to the right, and there's a light in your eyes, your eyes will just do this. And once you, yep. your eyes do that, then they know that you're impaired. So you yep. never take a test from a cop ever, ever. And don't yep. drive drunk. I on, by the way, guys, on anything too, any, like if any drugs or prescription pills or any of that stuff, it can, it's all going to come through your eyes, you know? You so Adderall, if you take Adderall yes, every Adderall. morning and you wake up and you yeah. take an Adderall pill, your eyes may shake if you, if you agree to take a test with the cop and then he's got you. He, you yeah. proved to him. And so now you give you him probable cause. Dungeon. That's right. I learned that, that, that term so, probable cause. So then, so then what happens? You, you take the eye test. Do you take a breathalyzer test? 
uh, after. So after the eye test and the whole night, I'm thinking, okay, I'm standing here waiting. I'm like, okay, because they said, if you do this test and pass, you can go home. So I'm like, cool, I clearly passed that. So I'm like, standing there ready to go. And by the way, I'm asthmatic. This plays a little bit of part of into the story. I'm asthmatic, so my asthma started to act up. It's 39 degrees that night. It's cold in California, unfortunately. And I'm, I'm kind of cold. I'd worked a full day at work. I'd worked 13 hour shift. It's now five in the morning. I'm exhausted, you know? So I asked the officer if I could breathe my inhaler. He said, no. I said, why not? He goes, you're not able, because that might impact any kind of testing we do. And I'm like, well, I'm an asthmatic, so I, I really have to. And he's like, yeah, I unfortunately can't let you back. Which, by the way, you don't have to ask these dirty swine if you could take a puff of your inhaler. Yeah, you I, I, again. Anything. They're not, not your daddy. They yeah, don't have dominion yeah, yeah. over you. Yep. You come to go pound sand that you <laughs> do it. Yep, I, I, I had, stuff. again, I, I was still the mindset that I was going home and these guys were the good guys. You know, I really oh. was. I was still in that mindset. Again, back to blue till it happens to you. Yep. My interactions with cops are really good friends of mine who are cops. I'm still good friends with that. I've always been great humans. So I didn't, again, thought I was just going home. And I was doing the right thing. I have no, and by the way, guys, everybody out here listening to this, I have no criminal record. I do have a DUI when I was 24. When I moved to LA, when I met you, Chile, back in those days, I didn't drink alcohol. I just moved from Miami. And I drank alcohol when I drank a little bit too much and I was driving home and got pulled over. Rock and roll, got a DUI, went to jail, did all this stuff. 11 hours in jail. I was drunk. I did the classes. I did this AA meetings. I did all the, you know, um, community service. I paid the fines. So you had that learned, actually. You already learned, learned not to drink and drive. And you learned yeah. not, not to take any chances, right? Now, mind you, that was May 8th of 1999. 99. Okay. So now this is 2015. This is 17 years later. This is 2017. So we're eight, almost 18, 17 and a half years later. Right? Yeah. So I'm now 42 years old. I was 24 back then. <laughs> yeah. Just moved to LA. Point being, uh, they say we have to do a breathalyzer test. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm um, again dead sober. I'm I'm down, but my breathing is labored because I'm it's cold and I'm I mean it's all that shit. So whatever it is what it is. Breathalyzer comes, I blow, and they're like, it's like not working or some shit. So they're like, oh well, we gotta get a new machine. I'm like, okay, so I wait. I'm like, oh, we have to go back to the station. And I'm like, no, no, we'll make this one work, right? So I didn't know this stuff about breathalyzers. So they try it again. I blow. And dude, <laughs> clearly, and, and this, is, this is where it goes a little bit legal. Clearly it wasn't working. Because what I found out later is that breathalyzers don't work in 39 degrees or lower. And if they're not calibrated before the last use, they can actually misdiagnose uh, the person that's blowing then. The person that blew before, it could show up to be their thing. So an improperly uncalibrated uh, breathalyzer will not show the proper results. Never I take know. a breathalyzer, never agree to any test, never, never yeah. cooperate with yeah. police, never speak. Yeah, yeah. So they couldn't figure it out. Long story short, we, I'm clear I blew zeros. I'm clear, right? Point being is that they go, uh, they pause. We see these officers stop, they pause, they look at each other, they kind of go, fuck. We, you could see them trying to figure out what's going on. They turn to me and go, uh, well, uh, Mr. Antonio, we're going to have to take you under arrest under suspicion of a DUI. There under it is suspicion. right there. There it is. You can be arrested for some under. moron who yeah. has no qualifications, doesn't know anything about the law. He was arrested for suspicion. Do you suspicion. Know remember, you never forget those words. <laughs> he's arrested. He's passed the breathalyzer test. Yep. He's passed the DUI, the bullshit tests that they do. He's passed everything. He's been transparent. He's been honest. He's been open. And then yep. when they finally get it to work and he blows zeros, they go, oh, that black man couldn't possibly be sober because <laughs> the guy on the ground is hurt. He must have done this. What's their totally. job? When you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So, so now they're going to yeah. arrest you for suspicion? Yeah, so now, now I'm getting handcuffed. And I, I know this one rule is that when cops do say you're going to handcuff you, you just do that. You don't resist. Because then there's like, you can get shot, killed, hurt. So I just, I put my hands behind my, my, my body and I get arrested. My wife's like, holy shit. So I'm yelling to her, not yelling to her, but talking to her, telling her what to do. I had to go to work the next morning, open up the restaurant at 11 a.m. So it's now um, 525 in the morning. I'm in the back of a cop car. How and I'm cuffs, like, hey. How, how, how do those cuffs feel, by the way? How do those feel? I was gnarly and they were not comfortable. And they sat me on the back of a cop car is all plastic, hard plastic. So you're just sitting there in this uncomfortable, cold ass plastic and, and shackled. And I'm in, you know, my dress clothes from work and I'm fucking exhausted. It's this whole experience. And I'm like, this is, you know, those out of body moments, you're like, this is not my life right now. Like, this is not me right now, but it was me. So I'm telling my wife all this stuff. I'm like, hey, Call this employee of mine, text her, give her the code, tell her the same thing. Well, not like this. You're, you're like, you're like this. Call me. I'm sitting in the back. Tell him this. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah you totally. felt it in. So you're in this tiny little space. 
Yep. Yep. All, all of that's happening. I'm talking out the window. And at a certain point in time, one of the officers says, sir, I'm sorry, you, got, you have to stop talking to your wife. And I'm like, sir, I have to, I run a restaurant. I have to tell my wife what she needs to handle for me. Cause I won't, I don't know how long this is going to take. Okay, I don't know so if I'm getting... let, let me give you the score upon suspicion. You can pass all their tests. You can pass mm-hmm. everything they do for you, do for you, do to you. But yeah. then upon suspicion, you will be treated like a slave you will be put in slave torture cuffs. Cuffs were designed for slavery to punish <laughs> slaves. You will be put in a claustrophobic little cage inside of the back door. You don't get to talk to your family. You don't get to yeah. talk to your wife. You will yeah. be treated like shit immediately. Yeah. And what do they have on Sean right now? Suspicion that he Suspicion. could be impaired when somebody else hit his car. Yep. You will be treated Crazy. like shit immediately. Yeah. So here's where, it gets, here's where it gets, so if that wasn't gnarly enough, right? And that's like, for me, now that it's been five years since that day happened, I, the, the gnarly part kicks in later. So wife handles everything. She's, of course, frazzled. I'm in the back of a cop car. They take me to, to the next spot. I go to the Pasadena Police Department. They put me in this, in this cell, in this holding tank. One of my clients who used to come to my clubs, one of my DJs, he's in there because he had a moment where he got to fight with his wife and ended up in a fight with security at a nightclub. So he's like, Sean, I'm like, hey, he's like, what are you doing here? I'm like, under suspicion of DUI. He's like, you? I'm like, yeah, I'm here. He's like, that's weird. So now I'm having this awkward, weirdly hilarious moment. He's clearly wasted, drunk, and he, but he, we were just having a great time. He's still in front of mine. Point being, I sit in there for a couple hours and then they move me to another solitary area, just me by myself. And then this officer comes in and I'll never forget, it was around eight. So now 525 in the car, in the cop car, get to the police department at six. I remember like six or nine in the morning. They put me in, they check me in, do all this stuff. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to sit here for an hour and get out of here. That's my thought. Again, still thinking that. They take the pictures, the blah, blah, blah. I'm smiling in my check in I'm like, I'm smiling. Like, now I look back at that guy. I'm like, you had no idea, Sean, how bad this could be. No, no. Oh, it's gonna so go. <laughs> I, I'm in my tank. I'm sitting there. And I'm like, okay. An officer's eventually going to come in and say, Sean, you're, you're free to go, blah, blah, blah. That's what I'm thinking. This officer comes in who hadn't been to the scene, by the way. That's a big part of this whole thing, too. Hadn't been to the scene of the accident and said, yeah, we haven't been to the scene accident, Mr. Antonio, yet, but we uh, we found out some, we have some bad news for you. I go, what's the bad news? And um, mind you, still awake. I just kind of like, kind of fading back because I'm exhausted. And um, he goes, unfortunately, the gentleman that you hit, I'll never forget that, he said that. The gentleman that you hit, he died. So now your charge is now murder and you have a $2 million bail. And he said that and it dropped like, like a lead, like a piece of, like a rock. And he said that to me. And I remember my brain went, what did he just say to me? Uh, the guy died. I now have a murder charge attached to my name and a $2 million bill. So then he pauses, he looks at me and he goes, uh, do you have anything to say for yourself, Mr. Antonio? And I was like, ooh, that was, to me, it landed super condescending. I'm like, wow, that's kind of kind of cutting to say to a gentleman you just told it's in jail now for murder, right? And if he knew anything about me, he'd know I'm not a criminal. I have no criminal record, right? So. He says to me, and I go, you know, officer, you just told me I'm in here in jail, right? With a $2 million bill on my head for murder when I got hit by someone. And he goes, yeah. I go, so no, I don't have anything to say at all. Lawyer, lawyer. You, you, that, already, that's actually what, you already did enough already, to help them yeah. arrest No, you. no, you my wife, by the way, little side note I mentioned, my wife was already on the phone with lawyers at the scene of the accident. And the lawyer that she called was at my New Year's Eve event. One of my best friends still, she called and woke him like he was in the middle of his New Year's celebration at four in the morning. He's like, why is Alicia, why is, you know, why is Sean's wife calling? Like, we're all best friends. So he picks up because she called three times. He's like, Sean got in an accident. What do we do? So she, he's coaching, she's, he's coaching her on what to tell me, but I'm over there on the other side of the street. With, so I'm not getting the coaching of what to say, do, be. I'm say just nothing. being honest. I didn't know that, right? So I didn't know Again, say nothing, right? So point being, so now I'm in there. The cop leaves me and he goes, you have that. So I call my wife. I call her and I'm, I'm, in, sh- I'm in shambles. Oh, now. crying. You're sobbing. And, yeah, you're I'm, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm I cried too. wrecked. Oh, yeah. I'm wrecked. Oh, yeah. I call her. I'm like, babe, you and I'm, I can't even. I'm so complete about that moment in my life. I can't even tap into energy anymore or that rage or that upset. It'll break, but, it'll break you down. Yeah, it will. So I remember who I was in that moment and I lost everything. And I called her and I said, I'm in jail for murder with a $2 million bill on my head. And she was like, I mean, she didn't say anything. She just crumbled. And I said, I don't know what's next, 
but I'll let you know. And we just both had this moment. So that's how it all went down. The gentleman, unfortunately, had passed away. You know, he had died. Turns out that the meth in his system is what helped kill him. So, so the let, impact. Me, let me jump in real quick here. Okay. Yeah, please go for it. So, so here's why Terry versus Ohio has to go. Mm -hmm. Because he had taken the tests and passed them. He had blown on the straw. That would have been, had he blown 0.9 or if his eyes had shooken, then he would have then created what's called, by, by submitting to tests, which I recommend you don't, that would be probable cause to arrest. That's mm -hmm. the Fourth Amendment standard. No warrant shall issue, but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation. That's by the victim that you hurt. And so when, when the probable cause wasn't there, they arrested Sean on Terry versus Ohio's reasonable suspicion. You mm. see, that's how he was arrested because the police decided that they were suspicious of him. It must have been him. He must have done something because this guy's a mess. Even though you can clearly see from the accident reports, and there's more investigation here that I'm, I'm jumping ahead because we've already yeah, talked about yeah. it. Yeah, for sure. It's straight up proven that it hits Sean in the back. The guy's in the wrong. The other guy yeah. who is in the wrong. But when you give a pig an opportunity to arrest you based on his suspicion, that's unlimited power. Yeah. That's why Terry versus Ohio has to go. If I have unlimited power over you, it's not if I'll abuse it, it's when I'll abuse it. You know what, too? I got to say, what's what's crazy about what you're saying? I'm just triggering this thought. I just remembered this. I was so cordial and elegant with the gentleman that I was talking to. I was calling because I heard them call each other by their first names. So one of them, that was one of the officers, the arresting officer uh, who arrested me later, I kept calling by his first name. And he goes, how did you know my first name? I'm like, I heard other officers calling. He was like, yeah, please don't call me that. Call me by my, yeah. my officer. Yeah. You know what I say? Go yourself. I'll yeah, call I was you like, by any name I want. You're lucky I don't call you pig. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was, because I was, again, naivety. I was so like cordial and nice and, and present. And the way he snapped at me, I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Did that, I, yeah, that's your name, right? And they're being mean and that we were saying they're being mean and rude to you. It, it was just really uncalled for. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to stop talking now and just that's stand because here there's been no transparency on pigs. And so now at this time, though, you're, Sean, you're in your deep 30s or maybe early 40s. I'm 40, time. I'm 41 going on 42. So, dude, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm 47 now. So, yeah, 42. And you're a black right. man in America and you run nightclub events. Have you had any previous interactions with police that were negative? Um, a couple of them, yeah. And I'll show you this, but oh, real quick, remember I mentioned the whole gang thing earlier. Turns up that corner, Washington and Fair Oaks back then, I don't know how it is now. It was a big gang activity. There was a big gang war happening at that time of my accident. So that weeks leading up to me to my accident, there was like murders and shootouts and stuff like that had happened previous. So it was a big now, heightened energy. Now that's, so they that, didn't even, just so you know, Sean, that's not see. true. That's not true. You may have heard those things and they may have reported those things. But no, 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 we thought we did our research. We did right, our research. But there's we, not we like, you know, gang wars with machine guns out on the street. A couple people been killed. Maybe some got yeah, shot yeah, back, you know, things no, like no, that. No, there, was, there, was, there was legit like three or four different incidents, incidents. In previous to mine that had happened. So it violence. filtered. Three or four it incidents of violence. Filter. Yeah. And, right. it, and it, it threw a filter in my whole situation. But, but nobody's that's, that's shooting just, a machine gun and shooting yeah, no one's, yeah, people. Yeah, you don't need that. militarized police to handle that corner. You're talking about individual people shooting each other during illegal drug interactions and stuff like yeah, that. Whatever, whatever clear, was we don't need militarized police. So, so now, yeah. now you're in prison now. You're in jail. You got a $2 million bond. And so that 10%, that's going to be 200 grand to get out. So yep. that's not possible for any regular person. And so nope. now that's an excessive fee and fine. Uh, yep. and, and there's no proof that you killed anybody. There's no nope. evidence. There's no probable nope. cause. You're in there because nope. one pig is suspicious of you. And so now what happens next? You have that moment on the phone with your wife. And then mm -hmm. what? Do you, you, you go back to the dungeon? or I mean, Well, no, what, what happens now is they move me to another uh, dorm, they call it. I learned all this stuff when I was in there. The dorm, and in that dorm, they had, I don't know, 20 or so people. We all had different cells within this, like, place. So, again, Pasadena, uh, jail, 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 uh, jail, courthouse, jailhouse, whatever it is, right? Or jail. Um, and the TVs are on. There's movies on. And I'm sitting there in my clothes, still in my clothes. And I'm good. I'm like, all right, cool. Now, unfortunately, because I have asthma and I said it in my check-in, they said, we can't treat you here if you have an asthma attack. So we have to move you. So then that's when they moved me to Men's Central Jail. 
that was a whole thing. So I go from Pasadena to like downtown, which that place is, a, it's a, it's one of the craziest places. I can I've testify. I spent, I spent a week there, so I can tell you all about so it So there you go. So Men's Central Jail. So there we go. So I'm now going through that process. Still suited up, still my clothes. Now, mind you, I don't even know what time it is now. So it's like 9, 10, 11, 12 in the morning. I'm You've been awake for over 24 hours at this point. Um, at that point in time, it's, it was, yeah, yeah, it was going, it was going on. Yeah, yeah, it was going because that day I spent the day in Pastina and then that afternoon into the evening, I remember because I watched the sunset from the back of a police car. <laughs> Fucking crazy. And uh, and they checked me in at like 8 p.m. that night. So now, yeah, it's almost 24 hours or, you know, it's 12 hours later or whatever it is, right? 13 hours later. And um, yeah, so I get into Men's Central and I'm like, now they're checking me in. And I'm like, what's happening here? Why, why am I going further into the matrix? So then I missed a day of work. There's all that, right? That's that's what it is. It's New Year's Day. I'm in jail. It's all weird. So now I'm sitting in jail. They put me in jail. I get the county blues, right? They give me my county blues. No, no, you skipped it. Before the county blues, though, are you put in the shower? Uh, this is, oh, that whole thing was gnarly. Okay, so. No, are you skipped so search? They, they check me in. Okay, how it looks is they, they check you in. You're shackled. It's kind of chain gang situation. Yep, it's disgusting. You get, Oh, it's terrible. It's Changing slave situation. Chain. Those are the same slave chains they used all throughout yep. slavery. Exact same, same slave chains. Exactly. I, I, yep. Yeah, my first son. Yeah, not fun. So uh, I was like Django and chained, having flashback. I'm like, that's okay, got it. So now I'm getting processed, and the process takes hours. So you get processed, in, and then you get put in this freezing cold, open air situation where you're just waiting to be called by your by your letter like your c group c group b and you line up now you're still in your regular clothes you line up but it's I don't freezing know cold freezing. It's fucking I mean, freezing. It's, it's like 40 degrees it is oh so... they, they did give us food though they gave us a little cart little jug of milk and and peanut butter and bread and jelly it was terrible right. Right. <laughs> it's, like a it's horrific dry as bad food i only yeah, ate things terrible. that were sealed i refused to eat i drank a ton of milk yeah. Yeah, it was, it was tough. So now I'm getting checked in and now it's shower time. And I'm like, wow, I'm, I'm just still confused. That's why I'm going deeper into this, you know? So now I'm getting checked in. They say, and then they put a bunch of us into one room and they say, get naked. Get yes. Down. Yes. A room full of men. A room, dudes. Yeah. yeah. You don't know. And then there's like 20 deputies in the middle. Is that correct? That's uh, for this one, uh, the one, the way they set it up, the glass, the windows, the plexiglass windows, about four or five of them stood outside and watched us as we took off our clothes. We took off our clothes. We followed them. They give us plastic bags. And then, and then you put your clothes in the plastic bags. And then you take them. So now you're standing in freezing cold. You naked. A bunch of naked dudes, right? You don't naked. know. For whatever situations, it's New Year's Day. Hey, happy New Year's to me, right? And, um, and I'm standing there. And now you line up. You After you're naked, all these guys, you line up naked back to back. And then there's all the other inmates who are... What do you call them? I forget what they call them now. I've lost trustees. that thought. They're called trustees. The trustees. The trustees. The trustees are now watching us checking in. And there's there's they're throwing some some energy. They're like licking their lips and like like yeah. it's yeah. it's so it's a whole world, right? Oh, yeah, for Somebody. me to comment, I mean, look at Pex over there. Look at Pex. Oh, he uh, lifts weights. He lifts weights. Uh, he must be tough. Yeah, yeah. What's wrong with your ears? Why are your yeah. ears all messed up? Yeah, see? Yeah. So now I'm going to the showers. The showers is like a big hall of just like, I remember I counted 28 spigots, like just 28 shower heads. And you just go and you shower and they give you a, a bath towel that's like a hand towel. Yeah, it's, it's, it's this big. Yep. It's a hand towel that they'd say that's what you do. Because under in. suspicion, you need to be treated like shit. Yeah. You need to be treated right? like you're the violent, murdering child yeah. raper that you yeah. are, Sean. Okay. Yeah. Because you're so, suspicious of you, so that so just to, just to manage, form of dignity. And it, yep, and I do want to give all these details, but I want to manage this experience so I can give everybody the, the whole thing, so it just wraps up in a bow. And so after the shower, do they strip search you then? Do they have to um, bend over? You're, you're well, you're you're naked, so there's nothing. There's, they don't strip search you anymore. And that experience, I didn't have any. I got strip searched a lot there, but not in that experience. You have to turn around, bend over, spread your butt. Yeah, you cough, off. bend over, do all that stuff. Yes, you do. You have to cough. Then they have to bend over, cough, and cough, and stay there for a bit too. And yeah. spread your butt cheeks. Spread your and they sit there and there's a few guys, a trustee. Oh no, it's like there's like ten people staring staring at you bending over, staring at yeah. the right up your backside. Yep, right up backside. Yeah, yeah. And, yep. and so that and the war on drugs now is so much better since 1971, right? We're, yeah, good job, good job. <laughs> it's so, so now, okay, so now I get to put in general population, and I had to. I didn't know this after getting through a process, getting my county blues, getting the shoes. Now I'm going into general population. I'm like, I don't know what that means. So I walk into general population, and it's it's like a bunch of different groups of people come at you and they go, who are you running with? Who are you running with? And I'm like, I don't know how this works. He's being so, indoctrinated into a gang. 
Yeah, I don't know. I'm like, I'm like, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm black and Hispanic, uh, Dutch. I, I don't know. What do I do? They're like, and then this one intelligent brother who ended up bonding, he's like, hey, man, I can tell you don't know how this goes. Just come run with us. And I'm like, okay. I walk over and he's like, and he starts showing me the lay of the land. Gives me the whole, like, this is what we can do. This is where you shower. This is where you shit. This is what you can go. This is what you can't go. This is what you, it's like, what you here for? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what I'm here for. Some what guy people don't me. know, though, is he's just legitimately joined a gang. And yeah. that gang, he may have to fight and kill for that gang. And if he doesn't, the gang that that nice guy indoctrinated him into will kill him. Well, here's the deal about that guy specifically I found out later. So, yes, that, that's the norm. This guy was a non-affiliate, as they called him. He is not a gang member. He was just like the legit clean dude who just kind of wanted to help people. So I found out more about gangs while I was in there for sure. But in this moment, it was five days. I was in there until January 5th. And why is because courts weren't open until the third uh, or that. No, that Tuesday. So the fourth is when they got to see me. So they they. I'm sitting in jail for five days. Like it's, it was wow. <laughs> so work family, my daughter, my wife, I'm just like, and I actually legit had my first depression. I was depressed. And I remember sleeping on the third, I slept 18 hours because I was so depressed and so broken. And I was so, I was like, I'm going to be in here for life because I have a murder charge in my head. My, and I had all these stories going like, my wife's going to leave me. My daughter's going to grow up without a fucking dad. I'm like, what the fuck universe? You know, like I was really, like I went into a really dark place. I'd never been in a dark place like that, right? So nothing was helping. And I told everybody, I'm like, whoever you guys are, I'm not interested in talking to anybody right now. Like, I don't care what you guys are doing. I'm just going to be right here. I stayed in my own lane. I'm like, not trying to talk, make friends. I don't give a shit. Like I'm here and I'm getting the fuck out of here as soon as possible. So you tell me what I can and cannot do. I'll do that. And that's it. I'm like, that's what I'm doing. Uh, so yeah, that was a whole other thing. So fast forward, I see the I see the judge on the fi- on the final case on the fourth of January because they didn't have a they didn't know what to do with me. They didn't know because none of the evidence made sense. Nothing they could tell clearly. He gave so the guy who changes tires a badge and said that your reasonable suspicion is enough to lock up a human being who's a contributing member of society. They hire the lowest form of human being to be a pig. Just so you know. <laughs> the There's prison so guards, by the way, they can't even become a pig. They're the lowest form. And now what they're doing, because no one wants to have to be a pig anymore, they're now drudging the prison ranks to try to get a prison guard to come up and be a pig. And that's mm. what's going on in America today. Oh, wow. Wow. That's crazy. I did not know that. So, yeah. So fast forward, man. I, I They end up seeing me at like 3.30 in the afternoon and I get uh, a bond to be released under a DUI. It gets dropped from murder to DUI, so from 10 to 2 million, to now DUI, $50,000 bail. So I get bailed out, my friends and my wife bails me out, and uh, I'm out. So I'm like, cool, I'm out, this is gonna go away. Oh, hell no. 14 months, 250 grand, court dates, court lawyers, the What's whole nine. What's your bail become though with the DUI? What's the bail become? Uh, I was 50 grand, it was 50 grand. So now you gotta come up with five, with uh, five grand. grand. So we came up with it, five grand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and, and unfortunately, you know, I, and at that point in time, I wasn't flush with cash, so I had to borrow that. You know, that wasn't sure. like, hey, of course. Yeah. I, so even now, right now, I don't have five thousand dollars liquid sitting around that I can just burn. It doesn't exist. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to and disappoint anybody who thinks I'm rich. I'm not. I'm <laughs> you're like, this is making my, it all the time, like most of us. You're like, here's here's my truth. So fast forward, I fight, and what happens was because of all the evidence and the way it wasn't presented, because a lot of things were missing. Some video footage was gone that was needed to show how dead sober I was. All these magical things vanished. The, the, you mean the, the the video of the body cams that showed that you were perfectly coherent and normal that disappeared? All of the other officers had all theirs turned in. The two officers that had were my guys, especially the one arresting guy, gone. It was magically gone. Oh, so cute. So now here I am standing in front of the court. And, and I'm you like, wonder why I call them fucking pigs, bro. Excuse me. I wonder yeah. why I call them pigs. And I didn't, dude, we didn't find that out for months. I was like, where's that footage? Because that clearly shows me speaking just like I'm speaking right now, right. doing everything, being respectful, doing all the things, like not slurring my words and fucked up. And you know, like whatever that was. So 250 grand later, uh, 14 months of court battles and February 7th, February 7th of 2018, a year and two months later, I had to do my last court date. And this was the, the time where I had to choose. And they said, you can either... You said, with the evidence we have here, we can either A, go to trial, 
and go to the next level and do that whole circus. And you spend another 150 grand or more, right? And you battle that out for however long and it becomes very public and very- Who tells great. you that? Who tells, who's telling you that? Uh, my, my law team my law team told me that that's what the next option is. Or what the, the, the defense was saying, they were offering me a plea deal. I can, yeah, they were saying, hey, either you take uh, a year, what, nine months? No, 90 days with a felony, okay? Or you could do nine months, you do half with a misdemeanor, vehicular manslaughter without gross negligence. And I said to my lawyers, oh, how about option number C, like three? No, I'm not taking any of this because I was innocent and dead sober. And I said that, I'm like, guys, if this is the best you can do, this is not acceptable. I said, I, I'm, not, I'm not taking any of it. They're like, Sean, you have to. Either that or you, you keep fighting. I'm like, I, I don't have it in me. Guys, 14 months, my life is falling apart. I can't, I, I didn't work for those four. Like I had to stop my coaching I know. business. You know, I know. That's, everything fell apart. I was borrowing money from every, and shout out to any of my friends who see this. Thank you. You guys all helped me survive that moment. Like seriously, my friends showed up hard. Our village came in hard. Those 14 months were supported by my friends and family around the world. Thank you. I was in a dark place because I was like, how is this happening to me? Some guy hits me on meth. They know he's on meth. He had a meth pipe in his pocket. They know he's a career meth user. And I go to jail because he hit me like it was crazy. So I took the plea deal. Plea deal put me in jail for four, for 100. The deal was uh, 125 days. Uh, so it was half, nine months, half is 125 days. So I went to jail on March 1st. 2018. I was in jail until June 22nd, 2018. I was there for four months. Uh, was one week shy of four months. And guys, I got moved five times. There was some gnarly shit. I got, they're talking about the butt cheek spread thing. I have five times, six times. Uh, gang wars broke out. Riots broke out. People were stabbed. I mean, it was, I was thrown in the hole at one point. All types of crazy shit happened. And I'm like, so I'm so grateful I survived that because it fucked me up for a bit. I came out a different human. I was not yeah. okay. You're My mental not health. Same, Sean. You are not I'm the same. You know, yes. I'm evolved. Yes. I'm evolved. How much I have, an, aware, I have now? an awareness now. How much I have you, an awareness I didn't have before. <laughs> how much do you trust police now? Uh, you know what? I've, I, that's, a, that's a slippery question. No, if, I pull, if, if a cop pulls you over, how, do you start filming immediately? Uh, yeah, I, oh, 100, I, we have, we have cameras in our cars. Now on our car, we have cameras. They, they run all the time. So yeah, if I would have had my a camera on my car back then, I would have not dealt with any of that because it would just show everybody. Yeah. Well, let me tell you but, what happened, Sean. If the, you had not given police the right to arrest people without probable cause based only on reasonable suspicion, none of this would have happened. If Terry no. versus Ohio didn't happen, you wouldn't have been in that position. Mm -hmm. Totally. But yeah, so that, that's, that's my story, man. I went to jail and I survived. And luckily being black and Hispanic in a black and Hispanic run jail cell, I was able to, uh, I yeah, was okay. able to negotiate, I was able to negotiate my way through the politics as they call them, the politics in jail between, you know, certain gangs and other gangs that just kind of ran in the middle and just kind of paved my way. And I, I survived. And honestly, I'm grateful for every second I was able to survive that madness in there because four years ago today, I was in jail today, March 25th. Today, I was in jail four years ago. And so, I so, do. <laughs> so I want to walk down this with you a little bit. It's going to be a little hair. I know we only have 10 minutes left and you have to go. Sean is a yes. doer. He's a motivational speaker. He talks mm -hmm. to people on the phone about his experience, about their experience. He yeah. helps people get through traumatic experiences because he's been yep. through it. I've known this yep. man since 1999. He's never been in a square, honest, upfront, direct with me. And so now I want to walk you through a little bit of what he experienced. So so the first thing we talked about is the torture cuffs and the strip searching for no good reason. There's no reason to torture someone. If they had asked Sean to go with them and said, you're on camera, you're going you gonna to come with us. He would either, either that or we put you in shackles and we drag you. Sean would have said, yeah, I'm in. I, I'll go. I'm, yeah. You got cameras on you, Sean. You're going to come? Yeah. Yes, I am. Okay. Yes, now the judge will see it if you do anything stupid. There's cameras. And then they put them into a torture cage in the back of a car with these being tortured. No need for that. They could have put a regular seat back there. He could have opened the door and shut it himself. Yep. Generally the same people, people are going to be crazy. They're going to be crazy, but just get it on camera and show the judge. You don't need police yeah. to be this authoritarian garbage men that they gar garbage people that they are because garbage men work hard, but you give them power and they abuse you. And then when he, all that crap, I would have never taken the plea deal, but he did. I hired Robert Shapiro and I refused. I spent every dime I had almost hundred thousand dollars. And so, so then Sean Antonio goes to jail for four months. And let me ask you, Sean, is every single day like a year or was that just me? Oh, hell yeah. I felt like I was gone. I felt like I was gone for years, honestly. Like, and I'll say it this way for everybody listening to this right now. 
there's nothing like having nothing to do. Like when you are, especially in, for me, the one trauma I had to really deal with for myself was like, there's nothing like being falsely accused of a crime and then having to go to jail for it. Like you just come out different. I, I'm different from that time. I've turned it into a positive, but there's definitely a lot of negative I had to get through to get to this point, right? But no, the, the eight, the, dude, every 24 hours felt like a week. And then I, I, go ahead, go ahead, like, go ahead. I was saying, I read so many books. I meditate like a motherfucker. I showered as many times as I could a day. I, I could only, my body only lets me sleep six to eight hours. So I was only doing like six to eight hours a night if I could do that. Uh, I played games, chess, handball, whatever, by race, which is another whole thing that triggered yeah, me. You can, I can't associate with you in jail. Yeah, we can't talk. You have a three-minute rule. It's a three-minute rule. I, I almost got killed minutes. because my best friend was named Tariq. Remember, remember, yeah. remember Tariq? So oh, Tariq, yeah. Tariq was my best friend, my workout partner. First day in jail, I worked out with the black guys, and they surrounded me and said, we'll kill you if you ever yes. train with yeah, the yeah. black yes. man again. Yes, as, as well. That is 100% true. And in my experience, it was a three minute rule that you have a three minute window to talk to the other races. After that, if it passes a three minute mark, you get beat up, jumped, beat up. No one helps you, you just get beat up. It was, a, or, or your county Christmas, your, your food gets taken when your food comes on Wednesdays. So not only do you get beat up, but they humiliate you, they strip you down to your underwear, they make fun of you, poke at your service in real life. They take your food, they take your clothes and you lose all your privileges for the week. What privileges? Wow. Are they? What are your privileges? The privileges are phone, <laughs> the phone, phone, yard. Like no, meaning like you can go to a payphone. You're it's in jail, not prison. In jail, it's payphone, so you don't get access to calling your loved ones at all. They take all that from you. They take your clothes. You're fucking freezing. They take all your. They can ravage. And these are fellow inmates, but like they not not. So, so what he's saying specifically is that if he breaks the rules. The inmates will tell him you can't go outside. You oh, can't yeah, shower. Yeah, yeah. You don't get to oh, eat. Yeah. It's not the guards. It's the inmates telling them. Inmates. And then, and then, so you're every day. I was every day, but I just want to ask you: Were you afraid every day that you could make a mistake and someone could hurt you badly? Oh, every day, every second, my friend. Every, every second. second. No, no, every second. And I'm a pretty badass dude. I can hold my own, but I was petrified. Yeah, I'm petrified. I slept. The one I opened, sleeping thing. True. One I opened. And back to the wall when I open, but 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 cheeks clenched because there was a lot of that in there. By the way, too, a lot of that, like it, a lot of lot of man on man, like so that stuff happened too. You see him dudes just getting, you know, just going for it. <laughs> like, okay, that's happening. <laughs> like it. And so then going it, to the bathroom. Where do you go to the bathroom at? Uh, it's wide open. There's just there's no walls. There's a small wall that's about three, not even three foot tall. And there's a, a row of bathroom, of, of seats, a toilet, a steel, by the way, steel, steel toilet bowls. And you have to sit by race and pee by race. And your knees almost touch a person next to you. That's how close they are. <laughs> like, there's no division. There's so no if you have to go to the bathroom in the day, you just got to go in front of everybody. In front of everybody. Yep. Everybody's people eating, playing games, whatever. you're shitting. And you have to flush after every, every poop. It's, I, it's a thing. So you don't look at smell. And if you don't flush after, you get beat up too. You have to shower by race. <laughs> like, I was like confused. I'm like, I'm black Hispanic. When do I shower? Do I shower between the blacks and Hispanics? I was like, it was, it is a lot. And I know we're running out of time. We're about to wrap up. But guys, what about, the guard? what about the guards? How vicious and brutal. And I saw so many brutal beatdowns, macings, torture, cuffed beatings. How many? Yeah. How many I actually didn't have that experience. I saw a lot of guards very aggressive and rude and short and dismissive and uh whatever their issues were then i saw a lot of guards who were fucking great humans so i i saw both i saw people who cared and really gave a shit about you and then i saw guys who were just fucking who were short angry people were you in <laughs> towers no, no I, was in, was I was in twin towers i didn't get any guards who were loving and warm and cared about well me. no they they they, I, they pulled me out of twin. i was in twin towers but by the way i apologize i didn't say that they moved me from twin towers and, oh. and i was in twin towers for five days they moved me to pitches detention center I spent 108 days in pitches. They oh, moved me around. Oh, Supermax. Dude. I was in Supermax, dude. No, oh. no. This is, I was in, like, like I would have taken Men's Central over Supermax any day now in comparison. Any day of the week, twice on Sunday. Pitches, pitches the center center is one of the top five worst jails in America at that point in time. I didn't know that until I got out. I wondered. It was terrible there. What, now Luckily, we have, we have three minutes life. left. What's on your record now? Uh, right now, specifically, a misdemeanor. It says I have a misdemeanor with vehicular manslaughter without gross negligence. 
So like, if I want to go to Australia where my daughter and my wife are from, I cannot because they will not let a person with a misdemeanor or any kind of felony or anything on their record. So I would have to get that vacated, which would be completely eradicated off my record or um, what's that other expunged. So I want to go to Australia as soon as possible when we're able to, uh, so you, I have to work that out. How do you feel about the cops who arrested you and charged you? I forgave them. I was really fucking angry for a long time. <laughs> just to be honest and plug back into that. I was so angry. And I actually saw my arresting officer. I saw him in 2017. So the same year it happened. In September 2009, months later, I was in downtown Pasadena. And at that point in time, I was still very angry. So every cop car I looked at, I would look to see if I would see my guy. And one day I saw him. And he didn't see me. And I called Alicia. I called the wifey and I said, hey, I saw him. She goes, how was that for you? I'm like, I've never been so angry in my life. She goes, how are you? She's like, come home, come meditate. Let's, let's get centered. But like, I would, I've never felt that kind of anger, but I, just to answer your earlier question, I love people who are great people who are cops. I'll say it that way. You know what I'm saying? People who are great people who do why, not the others people, those other Everybody people. lies. I'm talking about being willing to put you in torture cuffs and take you to a dungeon, knowing that they're taking you to a rape cage. They know Dude, it was, doing. it was insane. So I'm, I'm, I've definitely gone through my trauma and there's always a healing process. And luckily I'm a life coach. So I've been able to coach myself through this and get my own version of therapies and like that. It's maybe, five years maybe, later. Maybe I should call you a little more often because I, you still, should. Hate, I still hate these dirty bastards. I, I would love to walk you through how I got to where I'm at. Yeah, I would love to. And dude, honestly, I did a talk and I'll wrap it up with this. I did, a, I did a talk. You can probably look it up. It's called what I learned about being a black man in America. I did a talk to, to uh, 2019, uh, 20. Yeah, 2020. How can people uh, find you, Sean? How can people find you? SeanAntonio.com, S-H-A-W-N-A-N-T-O-N-I-O.com. You can find all my coaching stuff, my websites, all my stuff. Everything's there. My interviews I've done, anything. It's all up there. You can Google me and find a it, bunch Facebook, of stuff. Facebook, your Facebook page? Facebook, all of it. It's Instagram. all there. All of it. On my website. Sean Antonio on Instagram? Yeah. Yeah, on Instagram, it's a, yeah, it's, if you'll see, I have four different Instagrams. One is a, a books for my books. It's all on SeanAntonio.com. You can find it there. But here's one last thing I'll leave you guys with. Google Sean Antonio Los Angeles and see what you find. If you go like one, two, three, four, five, six pages down, you will find Sean Antonio, drunk driver, kills motorcyclists. You'll find it. It, it was all over my, my, my SEOs forever. So you'll find it. So you could still Google me right now and I'm, my name's still attached to that, that incident. So crazy, but... I, Sue, it's such an amazing pleasure to be with you. Thank you for letting me share my story. Everybody who's tuned in and listened to this, I'm gonna leave you guys all with, it, with this. Everyone can get over their trauma. You just have to face it. I had to face mine to get where I'm at today. And I'm so grateful that I'm here. And yes, it fucking sucked, but we can all get through it. That's it. God bless so, you, brother. God I love bless you, my friend. I love, I love you. you. Thank you. Great Sean. to be with you. Have a great time. I'll talk to you soon. And thank you for the honor. Overturn Terry versus Ohio. Later. There it is. Later. There it is. Great to be with you. Love you, brother. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.